I love art, all kinds of art, and I like sharing my passion with you. I've done several videos where I shared an element of art, a movement or a concept, and then discussed how you might apply it to your photography. And then I've shown how I've applied it to my own photography. Today I have a period in art history that I want to talk to you about, Romanticism. The Romantic period started in the late 1700s, but it really hit its stride later on in the early part of the 1800s. And it wasn't just an art movement, it was an intellectual movement. So imagine the world as it was. It's the Industrial Revolution, the Age of Enlightenment. These times were good for a lot of reasons, but they were very rational. People were really figuring out the what's and the why's of the world around them. And that's wonderful, right? Lots of mechanization of things previously done by hand, and that's good or bad, depending upon how you made your money. But even art was affected. There was a system to it and a hierarchy. But some felt that something was being lost, emotion. And that emotion was still a worthy thing to explore in art. And that we shouldn't lose an appreciation for the natural world and feelings associated with it. And that we shouldn't rationalize art, be it literature or painting or even music. There is more to it. I've simplified the idea of romanticism, but you get the idea. I've not spoken of the political ideals, of freedom, of nationalism, of the idea of using your imagination over rational thought and embracing the idea of fantasy, both wonderful and terrible. But basically the essence is this, powerful emotion, awe, fear, maybe terror, a lot of times having to do with nature, which was all a reaction to a highly rational period in history. So now that you have the background, how did it translate into the visual arts? How do you show something that will evoke strong feelings? Well, Romanticism manifested itself a bit differently in different artists and different areas of the world and during different times within the period. It even mixed together with other ideas and other movements. Romanticism influenced many smaller art movements. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the style that stands out foremost in my mind when I think of Romanticism one that was exemplified largely by American artists. In this style, you will see a landscape that almost looks endless, but there will be a solitary person or an animal or maybe a group of people. But those beings will most often be quite small in the frame, maybe even tiny, to emphasize the absolute greatness of nature, to leave you awestruck or maybe frightened, depending upon the scene. Let me show you a couple of paintings from the period. Here is a painting by Albert Bierstadt. It's called The Rocky Mountains Lander's Peak, and it was painted in 1863. Mr. Bierstadt was a member of the Hudson River School, which was an American movement, which was heavily influenced by the ideals and aesthetics of Romanticism. Now, I dare you to look at this painting and not feel the wonder and awe that Mr. Bierstadt has harnessed here. This huge landscape with towering mountains in the distance, the way the light is falling on the middle ground of grassy mountainside and a waterfall, then moving on to this peaceful meadow in the foreground with a group of Native Americans simply living in harmony with nature. It's a feast for the eyes. Interestingly, we so often hear about the starving artist who never knows fame until after their death, but this painting was a huge success for Bierstadt. It actually sold for $25,000 a couple years after it was painted, which seems to me like a lot of money now, let alone how much money that would have seemed 150 years ago. Here's a painting by Thomas Doughty called Shipwreck from 1834. Mr. Doughty was also a member of the Hudson River School. This painting is a departure from the Bierstadt I showed you a moment ago. In that painting of the Rocky Mountains, you feel awestruck by the beauty and vastness of nature. But in this painting, the artist wasn't going for peaceful. You can see the obvious power of nature here. The trees are bending in the wind, there are dark clouds, the ocean waves are slapping against the rocks in the middle of the painting, and tiny in the middle, we see a figure standing on those rocks, dwarfed by the enormity of the scene. Looking closer, we see there's also someone in the water getting tossed about in the white froth, and then a ship that appears to have wrecked against these rocks. The entire scene gives you a feeling of woe, fear, wonder, maybe glad to not be on that ship. One of the reasons that I like this period in art, particularly how the Americans saw it, 
was that there was such discovery, adventure, and wonderment. That's how I feel when I'm out in the desert or the forest, up a mountain or down a canyon. But how do you translate this into photography? Let me tell you how I did it. I took this idea and I went to Red Mountain, just outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. It's a place that I wonder at every time I'm there. It's a cinder cone that towers over you and it seems to envelop you. I struggle to photograph it because it's so big and I'm so close to it. So adding someone to the scene, like romantic painters did, will help show scale and inspire the kind of awe that I feel when I'm there. I used myself as the model and worked with another photographer, Raymond the intern, to capture shots that I felt would showcase the huge beauty of the area. I even added some action to some of the shots. Action, at least like this, isn't an element that you see very often in romantic painting, but I'm putting my own spin on things here. It's interesting and fun to try new things in your own photography. I like to apply things that I've learned in my art history studies to my own art. Like in this case, I'm creating some sort of portrait landscape mashup. <laughs> A lot of you out there are landscape photographers. You strive to show the beauty in nature or the starkness or the power. You might try to be a bit like romantic painters by including something like a person or an animal, or maybe even simply focus on a sprout of a tree. Anything really to emphasize scale. The scale of that being in comparison to the enormity of nature, which will hopefully evoke some sort of emotion in your viewer. At snapchick.com, I've posted a sample image from my shoot at Red Mountain for everyone, plus a gallery of images and an additional video for VIPs where I detail my editing process and some more behind the scenes info. You can check it out at the link in the description of this video. Let me know your thoughts on this style. And if you think maybe you're gonna try this style, definitely share your images.